Hello, just want to do a video here to show you the overclock settings that I use for the RX 5700 XT GPUs. And uh, shout out to my friend, this is actually his rig, we are logged in through HiveOS, uh, but I'll just go over his overclock settings here and what miner he is using. So yeah, without further ado, he is using the Team Red Miner version uh, 0 0.8 point uh, I think 3 something like that and he is running in B mode uh, if you don't know what B mode is uh, there's a couple configs that Team Red Miner runs there's either A which is by default or you have to go into the miner specifically and enable B mode and specifically when using the RX 5700 or RX 5700 XT GPUs enabling B mode makes a huge difference in efficiency when mining uh, the biggest difference is you can run a much lower core clock at the same memory clock. So, for example, if we were running in Phoenix Miner uh, for a 910 memory, we probably would be need we would probably need to be running upwards of 1340 to 1360 megahertz to achieve the same mega hash. Uh, the real reason why the B mode is so effective is when you run a lower core clock you get to run a much lower core voltage, lower core voltage, lower core clock. That is a lot lower power consumption, which means less heat being generated. And at the end of the day, as you guys know, with the RX 5700 or 5700 XT GPUs, the name of the game is keeping your memory temps under control. And that's what he's got set up here. Um, so yeah, let me get into how he sets his voltages. So of course, the core clock is going to vary depending on the memory uh, clock and of course when you first start out you're not going to know exactly what settings to use you can use the uh, core clock and memory clock ratio here as a base but the way like the way I started the way my friends started as well is we just trial and error we watch YouTube videos we look at the settings we try the settings out ourselves and then we go on to do an additional step is where we tweak them ourselves to fit our equipment because all silicon quality is going to be a little different some GPUs are going to require a higher core voltage than others and here's a prime example of GPU GPU zero here, even though it's the same model of ASRock GPU, uh, 1250 core, he needs 735 millivolts uh, to run stable there. Versus GPU one, he can run 1270 core clock at 675 millivolts. And now this is kind of, we'll go into talking more how I will set my, uh, my undervolts and stuff. So the first setting that we want to look at, because with the, uh, with these Navi cards, specifically the RX 5700 XT here, you have three categories of voltages to adjust. You have your core voltage, your memory controller voltage, as well as your memory voltage. So there's a lot of different settings to play around with. Uh, so the first setting that we want to focus on when we first get our GPU all set up after setting our memory clock, then finding the compatible core clock is core voltage. So what we want to do, there's two ways of approaching this. Either you start with the lowest core voltage or you start with one that is pretty safe. So let's say a uh, brand new system, we want to undervolt, we'll start with like 780 millivolts. That's a very, very generic, uh, um, it's a very generic uh, memory clock. No, not memory clock, mem core voltage you can set and then go backwards. So let's say 780 stable, we try 760, 760 stable, uh, then we try 740, that's stable, we go to 720, okay, 720 crashes, we bump it back up, and now we find 735 is stable. Then the next voltage we want to test is the memory controller voltage, and it's the same deal. You can either start high or start low. In this particular case, you can start maybe like 700 millivolts. If 700 millivolts is not stable, then you bump 710. You try 710, 720, 730 until it runs stable and no longer crashes. Once we have core voltage and memory controller voltage set and we have the uh, like the memory clock is what we want to run, then we move on to the memory voltage. And with the memory voltage, you can generally you start high and go low. The default memory voltage is 1350 millivolts. So that's where the first memory voltage you might want to try is 1330. Then you can go down to 1320, 1300. And in some cases, if you're running a lower memory clock, then you can even try like 1280, 1270. And I've seen some cards out there can run as low as 1260 millivolts stable. And like, why might you like some people are going to ask, like, OK, well, wh why bother undervolting so much? And the reason you want to undervolt is because when you lower your voltages, you're going to lower your power consumption and you're going to make your card run more efficiently. 
uh, more efficiently. And when you use less power, your card runs less hot. When it runs less hot, your memory will probably last you longer because specifically these are all Micron GPUs and the memory does run very hot when it gets hot outside or hot in the room or wherever you're mining. So that's where when we spend the time to undervolt every little piece that we have available here being the core, the memory controller voltage, the memory voltage, all we're trying to do is get our GPU to run as cool as possible by using as little power as possible. Uh, or as needed, I should say, to run stable. So yeah, that's that's just a quick overview of the settings here. I personally recommend if you have one of these RX 5700 or 5700 XT GPUs, for sure, I, I personally like Linux. If you're using Hive OS, for sure, make sure you're on the latest version of the drivers here, so 20.4. Use Team Red Miner. Use the Team Red Miner B config. There's a lot of guides online. It's the B mode. Um, and then you can set a very efficient overclock setting. Even with Micron memory, you can get pretty efficient here. Uh, you can probably start out with, if, you, if you've if you got good memory cooling, you can do something like 1270 megahertz on the core with like 920, 930 megahertz on the uh, memory there. And then, of course, following kind of my process that I like to go, start with core voltage, get that as low as possible and stable. Then you do memory controller voltage, and then you do memory voltage because there's a lot of variables to adjust here when overclocking. Again, core voltage, memory controller voltage, then memory voltage. That just seems to work well for me, and it's been and it worked well for my friend here because he's got seven uh, six hundred and seventy-five millivolts, and uh, yeah, his GPUs are very using like they're running very lean, uh, all things considered. And of course, do not, do not, do not use these in software power consumption numbers to base off of your build and actual power consumption. The actual power consumption of the rig is always going to be a lot more than what is shown here. I believe from testing an RX 5700 XT a couple months ago, so like running similar settings to this, you're probably going to be using anywhere from 135 watts to 160 watts depending on your silicon quality and what kind of voltages you need to run so of course always use a kilowatt meter when you have to figure out how much power your rig is drawing what kind of power supply you need etc like that always do an at wall reading there um but yeah that's gonna wrap up my video i do apologize it's not it's nothing fancy it's not edited i just wanted to share this with you guys out there hopefully someone out there can find this and undervolt and save their uh, gpu from overheating and uh, yeah, if you did get some value from this video, you can let me know in the comment section below as well. If you have any questions, you can go in the comment section and let me know as well. If you want me to ask my friend anything, like if there's a specific question I can't answer, I'll forward it on to my friend who is running this rig here and he can probably have a little bit of insight there again. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to summarize the video again for the hundredth time. Use some a Linux operating system like HiveOS or RavOS. Use the Team Red Miner the B mode in Team Red Miner, and then you're going to be able to undervolt your GPUs really well, starting with first, set your memory clock, then find the core corresponding core clock. Once you find a good ratio between that, move on core voltage, memory controller voltage, and memory voltage. And no, you do not, You, I don't think you can damage your cards by undervolting the GPU. The way you damage your cards is by letting them run well beyond their thermal limit. So for example, here he's got all his cards tuned very responsibly. His gigabyte card has poor cooling, so he's running a much lower memory clock, hence also lower core clock, and then he can also run lower core voltages to make sure that his memory does not overheat. I've seen people run cards with 90 degree memory, micron memory specifically, without having any issues. So, I mean, there seems to be a pretty good tolerance on it, but here he, he wants to mine long term. That's what he told me anyways. I mean, why else would you get into mining? Uh, so he's trying to keep all his memory and core volt, like memory and core temperatures really nice and low uh, so that his rig can last him as long as possible. And either they'll be good resale cards to gamers because I know for myself, if I'm a gamer and someone, someone's been mining on the card, the first thing I think is, oh my God, they've been overheated. Their, their fans have been run irresponsibly. And when you run these settings, it also allow you to lower your fan speeds lower temperatures and hopefully you're going to get a lot more life out of your card anyways i know i rambled on along there i rambled on a lot there uh but yeah i also if you have any polaris cards i do have some guides on my youtube channel you can take a look i've got some really good undervolting guides of what settings to use for raven coin that that algorithm is very very power hungry uh we got a good guide on that for the rx 570 as well ethereum classic and recently we made a video on ergo 
for the RX 570 GPUs. And uh, yeah, I do have quite a bit of knowledge in this space because I do have my own RX 570 mining rig. Uh, but yeah, luckily enough, my friend let me log in here and we can have a look at his rig. But anyways, I'm going to sign off there. Hopefully you got something from this video. And uh, yeah, remember the comment section is always available to come and chat. So anyways, take care. Bye-bye and goodbye and good luck with mining.